Welcome to MOOC course on Introduction to Proteogenomics. In the last lecture, Dr. Bing Jiang gave you very lucid elucidation of studying polymorphism. The QTL studies help to understand the effect of genetic variant on another gene located on the same or different chromosomes. GVAS studies help in identifying whether a particular gene variant from the entire DNA set could be correlated to a variation in the phenotype. In this lecture, you are also introduced the single nucleotide polymorphism or SNPs and genome wide association studies or GVAS studies. Today's lecture from Professor Bing Jiang will be another effort to explain the power of integrating expression quantitative trait loci study or EQTLs with genome wide association studies or GVAS. So, let us welcome Dr. Bing Jiang for today's lecture. So, let us look at some examples. The first example is a, um, this group. So, basically, uh, they know this uh, sleep is associated with uh, uh, hemoglobin concentration in blood cells. And then, uh, but they do not know how, why this happened. And of course, we are interesting, uh, interested in how this could happen, right? So, they did a uh, 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 EQT analysis. And through the cis EQP analysis, they found this SNP, this exact SNP has a good association with the gene expression right next to the SNP. The gene is called the uh, SMIM1. So, and then you can uh, generate a hypothesis that the SNP uh, probably affects the um, um, uh, this uh, homoglobin concentration through this gene expression, right? But that's just not hypothesis. But uh, at that time, there is nothing known about this gene. But what they did was to, in, uh, through some gene network analysis, I'm going to talk about it later in the next lecture. Um, and then they found this gene is particularly associated with the uh, hemoglobin metabolism genes uh, in the network, uh, indicating it might have the similar function uh, in that process. And then through some functional experiments in human and also in model organisms, they demonstrated indeed and this gene is involved uh, through deletion experiments. We found a causal relationship between this gene expression and the phenotype you are interested in. Uh, so, this shows the power of doing the CISQ, uh, EQT analysis. And also, we can think about the trans EQT analysis. Uh, let us see, uh, this SNP is associated with the uh, a uh, systemic lupus um, erythema met, uh, met, metastasis or SLE, this disease. Um, but I, at that time, nobody knows how this SNP is associated with that disease. And through EQT mapping, they found that this uh, SNP is associated with multiple genes, and one gene is uh, C1QB and with decreased the expression of C1QB and also increased the expression of multiple genes. Uh, involved in the type 1 interferon um, response pathway. So, this helps them, them to think that maybe in this uh, SNP um, has an effect because I mean, it has I mean, through the uh, 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 alter the expression of these genes. And the, the interesting thing is that I mean, the decrease the C1QB and the increase type 1 interferon response has been a hallmark. I mean, it's already known the disease has this phenotype. So, but now we know which genes are mediating this impact. And similarly, I, um, through the uh, traditional GWAS analysis, the multiple um, SNPs that has been associated with type 1 diabetes. But again, we do not know how these SNPs uh, exact, uh, execute their effect. Um, but through um, uh, EQT mapping, uh, this group found that although they, these SNPs are located at different locations of the genome, but they converge. So, they alter or they control the expression of the same genes. That means uh, different uh, alterations, gen, uh, genotypes converge to the same gene expression alteration and eventually change the phenotype. So, this shows, I mean, uh, examples basically show how you can integrate the GWAS analysis 
uh, through getting the DNA sequence and also the, for example, RNA-seq to get the gene expression and the combining them and of course the phenotype and then you will be able to not only associate the SNPs with the disease phenotype but you also know how, what are the gene expression that are involved in this. You would think, I mean, the protein expression is also important and we now know that the protein does not necessarily perfectly correlate with gene expression. I mean, if you do this at the protein level, I and mean, you probably will also get, I mean, additional new insights, right. But because of the technology is, I mean, less matured or lagged behind the RNA seq those technologies, there are relatively few PQTL type of analysis. But this audience, I think we should think about this approach in order to integrate the GWA study, for example, with the PQTL studies. And actually, there are some groups started to do this. And in this study, um, so basically, they look at the 75 uh, uh, lymphoblast cell lines and then they did the uh, genome-wide uh, genotype study and the RNA-seq ribosome profiling uh, through ribosic and the SILAC proteomics experiments. So now you have the genotype, you have the uh, MR expression and the ribosome occupancy and the protein expression. So, and uh, they were able to identify the, they focused only on the cis uh, EQTL, uh, uh, RQTL and the PQTLs and they found hundreds of uh, and uh, sometimes thousands of these uh, cis QTLs. Uh, and uh, then they asked, uh, I mean, if I found a uh, cis EQTL, uh, what's the likelihood I'm going to find the same um, uh, like, um, like RQTL and PQTL, like, uh, meaning the SNP controls the gene expression, also the MR expression, also the ribosome occupancy and the protein expression, that means consistent, right. But they found, for example, if you look at the RNA, of course, RNA, RNA is one, but only 88 percent of the RNA, the EQTLs can be replicate in the uh, ribosic experiment or the RQTL level and only 67 percent can be replicated at the protein level, the PQTLs. So, this basically indicate not all the I mean, uh, EQTL effect are reproducible at the PQTL level. Also, it is the same I mean if you have a protein QTL, only 35 percent of them can be observed at the EQTL. Uh, that is kind of consistent with our observations uh, in the MR and the protein expression are not perfectly coordinated, but this also indicate that for example, a uh, 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 SNP might have uh, effect only at the protein level, but not necessarily at the uh, RNA level. This could happen for example, um, if the SNP is in a region that is controlling translation of the protein rather than the transcription of the gene. So, uh, but we can look at these examples. For example, in this case, I, we can see the effect is consistent at the protein level or the ribosome occupancy level and R level because I mean, the three genotypes, the effect is I mean, kind of uh, uh, colored by three different colors. We can see the difference. Uh, can be observed at the RNA level, the ribosome occupancy level and the protein level. But in this case, I mean, we can see the effect is only observable at the protein level, um, but not the, at the uh, ribosome and the RNA level. That means uh, this SNP is affecting the translation of this protein or the I mean, maybe the uh, stability of this protein without affecting its RNA and uh, ribosome uh, translation uh, ribosome um, occupancy. So, this indicates if we do both EQT analysis and PQT analysis, it will give us more information than just doing the EQT analysis. But for this study particularly, I mean they only look at the cis EQTL, they did not look at the trans QTLs. Uh, because as I said, I mean when your sample size is small and the trans EQT area is less difficult to observe because the effect uh, is relatively smaller. And finally, I want to show one example and what I, we have talked about so far are all the about SNPs which are the germline alterations, right. Uh, because this audience is interested in cancer. So, we can borrow the same idea and, and apply to the cancer studies. Uh, and in this case, we 
uh, didn't look at the uh, SNPs, we look at the somatic copy number alterations because in, uh, in cancer there are a lot of chromosome regions that are getting amplified or deleted right. And then we can consider that as the genotype uh, change right and then we want to ask whether the genotype change will affect the gene expression, MR expression and the protein expression of that gene or maybe it will affect other genes in the genome. So, and uh, for this we uh, did analysis in anti correct tumors and then we uh, calculated the copy number alteration for individual genes uh, based on the uh, SNP array data and then we get the R6 data. So, basically we have the MRI abundance for each gene and uh, we did the neighbor free shortcut proteomics in this study and uh, got the protein abundance for the genes. And we only focused on the genes have both uh, uh, MRI and the protein measurement this in, uh, correspond to close to 4000 genes at that time. Uh, and, but for copy number we have the data for 23000 genes. And now, for each uh, copy number data and uh, all the MRIs, we can calculate. But in this case, the genotype is also continuous, right? Because uh, it's a copy number measurement, and then we can calculate a uh, Pearson correlation between the genotype and the MRI expression. And uh, if there is a significant positive correlation, we put a red dot here. That means the copy number change of this gene will affect the MRI abundance of that gene. Um, and then if there is a significant negative association we put a green dot here and if there is no significant we leave it blank. And uh, this is a plot we get from this analysis and the interesting thing is we observed two types of interesting patterns. Why is uh, at the diagonal we see a very strong diagonal pattern and the other type of pattern is this stripes I mean the vertical lines. Let us say uh, if uh, we use this gene as an example, this locus as an example, if it this copy number amp amplification will increase the MRI expression of the gene in that locus. So, you are going to have a significant copy number change and um, the MRI expression change and then you are going to get a red dot because I mean, here all the genes are. Uh, ordered based on the chromosome location and here it is also based on the same chromosome location. So, if it is a cis effect you are going to see a red dot here right. But let us see this gene is a transcription factor and the uh, amplifi uh, DNA amplification of the transcription factor not only cause a higher abundance of that gene, but this transcription factor will in turn and activate or deactivate a lot of other genes. So, then you also see a genome wide effect of that uh, DNA copy number change. So, we call this the cis uh, band or the on the diagonal because it is the copy number change that will alter the MRI abundance of the same gene, but we also see the genome wide these vertical bands these are the trans band meaning copy number change at this position may affect a lot of other genes in the genome. And then we also look at the protein data. So, here is the correlation between copy number and the protein. We can see both the cis and the trans bands getting weaker. I mean we get kind of similar patterns, but it is weaker. This indicate not all the uh, impact at the MR level can be carried over to the protein level. Um, this is called the uh, um, uh, phenotype dampening meaning there is a reduce of the effect. For example, uh, if the copy number amplification give you more MRAs of a certain gene, but this gene does not give you the growth advantage of a cancer cell, the protein is not needed then we do not need to make that extra protein. So, th that means there is additional regulation at that level that will remove those effects that is not necessary. So, and we also sometimes see the uh, the copy number protein correlation only observed at the protein level, but not at the corresponding MR level. This indicate that copy number change might only affect the protein especially for the trans effect. So, um, for this is very helpful because now we can look at this plot and we can say ok, there are certain chromosome regions that have particularly strong impact uh, at the global level. For example, this 20 Q region seems to have a big impact 
grow a genome wide for mRNA and protein and there might be some interesting genes in that chromosome. And we also can look at the trans C effect or C effect and we can see in uh, this indicate the large circle indicate all the protein coding genes in this 20 q amplification region that we have both MRI and the protein measurements and uh, this indicates the genes uh, with um, the uh, good uh, copy number and MR coordination and this indicates the genes with good um, copy number and protein coordination. So, this help us to narrow down to the genes that the copy number will not only increase the protein uh, MR level, but also increase the protein level and these are the very likely cancer driver genes in the region. And for example, through this approach we were able to identify SARC which is a very well established uh, oncogene in colon cancer and then the TOMP34 has also been reported and we are able to identify a new pot, uh, pot, uh, candidate driver HM. Um, HNF4A um, which could be a new discovery to be tested in the future. So, just to uh, give a quick summarized uh, summary of the talk. So, we dis uh, talk about the genotype and the phenotype and the using association study to uh, understand the relationships or test the relationships and depending on whether it is a binary trait or qu quantitative trait, we have to use different types of statistical tests. And if we do this at the genome wide scale, we uh, it is called a GVR study and we can use Manhattan Pro to realize the uh, results. Uh, and then if we treat the gene expression as a quantitative trait and then we can do the EQTL, RQTL, PQTL type of analysis uh, and the, this QTLs can be divided uh, into the cis EQTL and the trans EQTL based on the re positional relationship between the uh, genot uh, the SNP and the genes and uh, we showed a few examples that you can integrate GWAS and the EQTL or EQTL, RQTL, PQTL or copy number and the MR and the protein expression to understand the relationship between um, uh, the genotype and gene expression and the phenotype. Um, but um, uh, maybe we can have uh, one or two questions or maybe we can discuss uh, during the lunch. Copy number analysis please. Yes. Can you Uh, in that the last column, uh, so can it be like the mRNA degradation, it is not getting degraded and which is one of the reason most of the proteins are shrinking, I mean the transcript has shrinking. So, I think it yeah it could be the well, but the, if you think about the RNA seq right, it is actually measuring the uh, steady state mRNA abundance. So, I think the degraded RNA will not be measured at the RNA-seq. I mean, yeah, if you consider that measurement is at the steady state, I mean that has already been taken care of. But of course, I mean it is kind of dynamic. So, it might partially reflect that effect, um, but I would think the most of the mRNA measurement we have is for steady state. So, the it is uh, I already incorporated both the RNA generation and the degradation has both been uh, measured in that uh, measurement. But also, I mean this is not the abundance of the mRNA or protein right, it is association between the um, copy number and the mRNA or protein. Yeah. But I think the discrepancy is more likely to be caused by uh, the author like translation or the protein uh, degradation, the half life of the proteins. Yeah. Today's lecture broadly explained the use of various integrative analysis to understand disease pathobiology. Using examples from published literature, cis EQTL and trans EQTL mapping integrated with GVAS study were shown to correlate the gene expression with phenotype. Additionally, the integrative analysis of somatic copy number variations and mRNA abundance 
were seen to be directly correlated. In the next lecture, you will be introduced to the next generation sequencing technology and its application by an industry application scientist. Thank you.